Dr. Dr. Bharti Kaushik, ma'am, to please uh, join and give the welcome address. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Monica. And uh, it's heartening to know that we are entering the phase two of our SRG training, wherein we have five states and almost all the southern states are covered in this, if I'm not wrong. So the sessions are going to be very interesting. So it's my proud privilege to welcome each and every participant and the resource persons who have joined this preliminary session. And I would like all the participants to keep their diary or journal along with them. And if it's not asking for too much, then each one of the participants can jot down the expectations. What are their expectations from this five-day session? So that when we are in the valedictory, we can match our notes that where we are, how much of our expectations have been met. And once you are into hands-on sessions, Request is and expectations are be very, very active and give your 100%. Choose the topics and examples during your hands-on sessions so that you are able to showcase your creations and use your creations into your teaching learning sessions. Right? So, uh, Monica, you are saying something. But your audio is mute. No, ma'am, no. Please continue. Okay, thank you. So, um, how many participants do we have? I can see 148 participants. And the way all of you were interacting during attendance, that indicates your level of enthusiasm, your level of motivation, so please sustain this level of enthusiasm and motivation. And another thing, the resource persons like Dr. Monica, they may appear to be very young and energetic, but let me tell you, don't go by their looks. They are hard task masters. That includes Dr. Pinky as well. And you are in the safe hands. So give your 100% and you will receive 500%. Looking forward to good creations, good content, and happy smiling training hours. Thank you very much for joining this training. Thanks to your authorities as well for deputing you for this training person, training program. And... Um, Let's meet during my sessions and also on the valedictory as well. Welcome once more. Thank you, Monica. Over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> ma'am, you have opened our uh, backend information in front of all the participants. We are also there to support everyone during this training program. So thank you once again, ma'am, for this welcome address. Uh, now I would uh, like to invite the program coordinator of this uh, five-day training program in four phases, which we are doing, Professor Indu Kumar, for presenting us the background of this program so that we can know what we are going to do in this program and what we are aiming through this program. Ma'am? Uh, I welcome you uh, for this and over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Monica. And uh, thank you, Dr. Bharti, for giving uh, a welcome note to all the participants. Uh, once again, I welcome all of you, uh, uh, Dr. Bharti, Professor uh, Behra, who has also joined us, I believe. Uh, he is uh, not uh, present in uh, Delhi. He uh, is outstation, but uh, graciously he finds uh, time to join uh, this uh, 
inaugural program to uh, have a talk, have a conversation with all of you and give all of us a way forward. So uh, uh, moving on to the objectives of this program. So as we all know uh, that uh, the uh, very title of this uh, training program is development of e-content. So uh, it's obvious that we will be uh, developing upon development of e-content throughout these uh, five days. So day one will be uh, um, a bit of, uh, we will be having technical sessions where you will be knowing uh, what are different types of uh, e-content, different forms of e-content so that you know that these are the different forms of e-content and during the five days you will be learning the development of all these uh, types of uh, e-contents so in this phase phase one we have already uh, completed successfully with a number of uh, states participating in in this phase we have uh, six states and a few states have dropped in this session because of their genuine reasons, but they will be joining us in the next two phases. We will be inviting them in the next two phases. So uh, this uh, in this phase, Andhra Pradesh is there, Karnataka is there, Telangana is there, uh, UT of Puducherry, Lakshdweep, Andaman and Nicobar Island and Ladakh. So these states we are covering in this uh, phase. And we have designed the training program in a way that you get most out of it. So uh, we have planned uh, demonstration sessions, sessions of various e-content development uh, tools and also uh, what you will be getting out of it. Apart from this, you will also be learning about OLAPs, ARVR content. We will be demonstrating a variety of digital content uh, in a very, very engaging manner to all of you. And uh, also, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Bharati, that our team is, uh, they, they, are, they are very uh, proficient in, ma in making you engage throughout the session. And you uh, have to be uh, here in 100% attendance for all the sessions on all the days so that you don't miss out of anything. And uh, also uh, we will be discussing in this session about instructional designing, graphic resources, audio resources, video resources, infographics, how images can be turned into good learning resource will also be taken up during uh, these uh, sessions. Uh, we will be also discussing uh, what type of e-content is required in uh, future as per the perspectives of NEP 2020. As we know, there are five important areas on which we are also developing verticals on Diksha. And those areas are uh, foundational literacy and numeracy, vocational education, adult education, virtual labs, and content for us uh, vertical for CWSN. So we will be having separate spaces on all these five important areas on Adiksha. We already have uh, the verticals for four out of these five and the uh, fifth, which is CWSN is also in pipelines. So we will also be discussing the kind of uh, resources which are suitable for the need of differentiated student population that we deal with, including uh, children with special needs and also what kind of resources can be developed for adult education, foundation literacy, foundational literacy and numeracy, what are OLAPs, how we can utilize OLAPs and uh, 
the uh, vocational education uh, vertical. So we will be covering all these aspects also, and uh, we will be discussing what specific contents need to be developed for all these uh, verticals. So uh, these are some of the highlights of the uh, workshop, which we are organizing you for the five days. Apart from this one important aspect is evaluation of e-content because uh, we uh, develop also, but we also procure e-content because the uh, large need of uh, having the e-content also, uh, also raise a need to uh, the curation of e-content. So not only development, but we also deal uh, in curation of e-content from various authentic sources. But while cu curating, we also need to uh, know how to evaluate the e-content, not only for curation, but evaluation is an um, important aspect of development also. So while developing, how evaluation need to be taken care of, after the development, how curation need to be, uh, how uh, evaluation need to be taken care of. And if we are housing content on various uh, repositories of e-content, so there also there is a dimension of evaluating e-content. So evaluation is a continuous process. So we will be uh, learning how to evaluate e-content and when uh, it comes to any kind of resources, any kind of e-content, we also need to understand the licensing policies also. Uh, so, uh, and the intellectual property rights. So we will be discussing uh, about intellectual property rights, OERs, and uh, the various licensing uh, policies need to be taken care of when we are developing e-content, using e-content, and uh, 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 whenever we are utilizing e-content. So licensing is also an important aspect of, this, of it. So these are uh, uh, highlights. As you get deeper into uh, the uh, training program, you come to know what uh, we are doing and how it is important for you. So you will get justification of everything what we are doing, but we are open to uh, the suggestions and requirement of all of you. And also don't think that you are going to be uh, proficient in e-content development in these uh, five days. So you have to uh, participate in hands-on so that you can learn better. You are not going to proficient in all the tools which will be demonstrated here. You can select a few tools of your choice, use them and start developing e-content. That is the expectations. If 20 participants are uh, there from each state, each one of them can group them, they can group themselves and uh, start working on the tools of their interest. So it uh, is practice that will make you uh, perfect, not these five days are going to do some wonders that after that you will, uh, from the next day onwards, you will start developing e-content, but you need to keep practicing. We will also be giving you practice here because you are expected to submit assignments also based on the learning you acquire here in this training program. So be ready with that. And the uh, issuance of your certificates will also depend upon the, uh, the assignments that you submit. So it is, a, though it is of a very short duration, but we try to make it a well-crafted uh, training program so that you all learn and practice and contribute. Learn, practice, contribute. So that is the motto. So uh, with these words, I will... Uh... Okay. 
so with these words uh, i uh, end uh, my uh, deliberation here uh, and uh, uh, we will proceed on to the next uh, part of this uh, inaugural session over to dr monika Uh, thank you ma'am uh, thank you for giving us uh, this uh, such a uh, clear overview of this uh, program we now are very much aware that what we are going to do and how well this has been planned uh, from this end and let's see how it reaches to our participants during this program i am happy to sh hear share you that professor behra amrender prasad behra joint director ciet ncrt has already joined the meeting but he is in some other program so he might not be able to give us the opening remarks right now but he will be joining in between the program to guide us and uh give us a way that how we are going to move in this five days program so i i would like to welcome him here but uh, i with this uh, foundation that he won't be able to speak i still would like to welcome because he is the force behind all of us to guide us to give us a vision and motivate us for planning such a program and executing it with all the efforts and motivation that we have from uh, professor behra thank you very much sir uh, thank you to the to manager please go ahead please go ahead uh, blessing us and guiding us thank you very much sir as already been mentioned by dr Dr. Monica, that uh, Professor Behra is on an official uh, deputation, so he is out of station. He is attending some other program, but he uh, joined this inaugural session uh, to uh, watch us um, having it. So he is the, as already mentioned, he is the guiding force and the program director of this. Uh, all these uh, four phases that we are. Uh, uh having for e content uh, development so he also um, had a session for this workshop on ict initiative which the responsibility of uh, delivering this session he has delegated to me so maybe uh, during uh, that session we will be talking more uh, and uh, definitely he will join us in the validatory session then we will get an opportunity to hear him hear him so thank you uh, very much professor behra for joining us so let us move on to the next um, uh, aspect of it and uh, i think the uh, all the proceedings of inaugural we have done with so uh, now nah, we are just going to have a formal vote of thanks for all those who have joined this uh, inaugural session and after that we will start with the proceedings of this five days training program so uh, over to dr monica once again thank you ma'am uh, now i'll request my colleague ms pinky singh to present the formal vote of thanks for this program for this inaugural session over to ms pinky singh thank you dr monica good morning one and all present very warm greetings uh, to all the participant from six states and ut and our uh, and all the official authorities who really uh, provided uh, the list in a very short message and all the srg team members and i would like to thank the visionary jd ciet professor mrindra behra for designing for visualizing designing and organizing such a uh, uh, informative training program where we can learn uh, development of e content for the uh, digital education 
so uh, which is a which is a first need of our of today and and i would like to thank professor indu kumar the program coordinator for organizing and uh, drafting such a uh, uh, so many informative sessions which will impart you all kind of aspect of developing e-content and i would like to thank uh, head DICT, uh, Dr. Bharti Kaushik, for, uh, uh, for providing this opportunity to organizing this training program. And now uh, I would like to also thank uh, all the participants who, after overcoming so many challenges like uh, devices problem, network problem, connectivity problem, they are really there to join us to learn and really contribute in any way for the uh, country of for the children of our country i really welcome all of you and i really hope this training program become a very learning experience for all of us and sharing so many uh, important aspects of developing e content and uh, for this uh, we, I would request you all of you for a group photo so uh, we can on our video camera and we can take uh, a group photo. I would request everyone please open your video. I again request everyone please switch on their camera so that we can have a group photograph in the set in a in a screenshot manner we'll be taking screenshots of all of you present today and again I welcome you uh, for this five-day online uh, orientation of SRG training program for development of e-content. Uh, thank you very much. Uh Thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Pinky, for uh, presenting the formal vote of thanks. Now, uh, formally, now we have started the program and we are moving into the first session of this program. First session of this program will orient us towards the different ICT initiatives which are being run at national level. And for awareing us and guiding us through these ICT initiatives, I would like to invite our program coordinator, Professor Indu Kumar, ma'am, for uh, this uh, session and presentation. Over to you, ma'am. Please unmute, madam. Welcome once again uh, to this uh, first, the first session of the workshop, uh, that is ICT initiative. So I was saying that whatever we do as professional, we do it in certain context. 
and all the ICT initiatives are that context in which uh, for which we uh, mm -hmm. work as professionals. So uh, you will come to know uh, in this session that what is uh, happening at the national level, especially in the context of NEP 2020, which is already there and all of us are working towards NEP 2020. So what is being done at national level and uh, what can be done at the state level, you can get an insight from this presentation. Uh, I'm not saying that you people are not uh, working towards it because NEP 2020 is for the entire nation. And I uh, know that all these states and UTs are already working towards achieving the goals of NEP 2020. Uh, so by this session, you will get more insight on what uh, can be done, what are the important areas of education and how we can enhance the quality of education by achieving the goal of NEP 2020 uh, by working towards these ICT initiatives. So Dr. Monica will be helping me out with the uh, uh, presentation. So she will be project, uh, sharing her screen to project the presentation. And I will take you through all the ICT initiatives in this session. Uh, Dr. Monica is requested to share screen. Yeah. So use and integration of technology and digital education is the title of this session. So let us move on to the next slide. So uh, here you can see what is the educational scenario in India and what is the goal. Imparting quality, uh, equitable and quality education and lifelong learning is the goal. And you will see if you have gone through NEP 2020, these, this is the highlight of NEP 2020, equitable quality education for lifelong learning. And this should be the goal of all of us who are working in the area of education. And uh, what kind of scenario uh, we have in India in terms of uh, the uh, population of teachers, population of learners, and the general population that we have, which we have to um, uh, take through a process of lifelong learning because learning doesn't halt anywhere. It's a lifelong uh, process. Once you get retired also, so there is a lot to achieve. You start the second inning. For that, the concept of lifelong learning is there uh, and ed oh or education for all we can do. Calling it adult education, but we are calling it education oh. for all for <laughs> lifelong learning. So uh, you can see here uh, in, uh, from bottom, you can uh, follow my cursor. India has 1.3 billion uh, population and we have 1.5 million schools in our country, 900 plus universities, uh, 1400 plus teacher education institutions and 330 million students. So that is the kind of number that we work for. Then uh, continuous professional development, CPD of 10 million teachers is a big challenge for us, which we have to meet. Then a uh, skill training of youth, which is two third of our population is also one of the important uh, goal that we have to work towards and for that uh, we also um, addressing it through vocational education and also having a component of vocational education in adult education or lifelong learning or education for all then bridging the digital divide is another goal that we have to work towards there are uh, many dimensions of digital divide that we have in our country and it uh, came to our notice more prominently during the time of COVID-19 
when everything uh, the 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 uh, the formal system of education came to an halt and we were forced to move uh, 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 to digital or to online education then it was realized that so many dimensions of digital divides are there which exist in our country there is no um, <clears throat> equitable infrastructure available digital infrastructure available for uh, the, the children and teachers of this uh, nation so that is all, that uh, that is why it is also one of the important area if uh, devices are there so the, some uh, because of the ge geographical location of a particular state or ut's internet uh, connectivity is a challenge uh, and uh, somewhere uh, the digital divides are challenged. Somewhere the possession of digital divide, who will uh, uh, digital devices is a challenge. If there is one device, who will possess that device and how to uh, continue education of two or three children using a single device was another challenge. So that is why multi-mode delivery of education was something which we worked uh, towards. So uh, all these challenges and deliverables are there. And whatever digital in education in initiatives we have to work towards need to take care of uh, all these kind of challenges also and how to bridge the digital device as, as of now. So we will not wait for that one fine day when everything uh, will be perfect but we have to be perfect keeping in view the imperfection that is a reality and that exists so uh, next slide please here uh, we can see uh, ict use in india and uh, policy directions so this is a historical a uh, timeline of a uh, chronological timeline giving you a background of ICT initiatives in India, use of technology in India, starting from 1972 when ET scheme came into being. After that, in 1983, uh, INSAT was utilized for dissemination of education through uh, uh, television and radio. Then class project was started in 1984. Then NEP 2020, uh, NEP 1986 uh, came into being, a new education policy 1986. After that, in 1992, its uh, program of action was um, uh, given to the country for uh, initiating action for the implementation of policy. Then EduSet uh, was launched, Education Satellite was launched in 2004. ICT at school scheme was formulated and uh, NME uh, Cal project for school education and computer aided learning and NME ICT National Mission of education for ICT was launched for higher education. So this happened in 2004. Revised ICT at school scheme and ICT awards were launched in 2010. Then in 2012, ICT policy came into being. In 2013, two important uh, initiatives were launched by CIET and CRT, and those were NROER and ICT curriculum, National Repository of Open Education, uh, Educational Resources, and ICT curriculum. In 2015, Digital India and e uh, were launched, and EPG Parshala for higher education was also launched. Uh, Digital India was a campaign launched by the Government of India. E Parshala exists in the form of a mobile app and a portal. And EPG Parshala was launched for higher education through introduction of uh, the uh, uh, having all PG courses for online education. 
Then in 2017, Swayam MOOCs was launched. Swayam is a platform for the um, dissemination of massive online or open online courses. And EPG Parshala, whatever courses were developed uh, under EPG Parshala in 2015 were uh, housed in Swayam MOOCs platform. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned that it was for higher education, but school education was also contributed in the Swayam, on Swayam MOOCs uh, platform by having uh, the uh, subject specific uh, courses for school education on a Swayam platform. Then Swayam Prabha. Uh, DTH channels were launched, uh, also launched in 2017. So uh, this time around uh, 32 channels dedicated for uh, education were launched. But now we are ready with, the government is ready with uh, more than uh, 200 channels to be given away uh, to the country for uh, meeting the cause of education. And um, for so that all these states and UTs can uh, take these channels and run for the specific purposes they want to run these uh, channels. At CIT uh, level, uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, we had earlier, we had uh, one DTH channel and we were running it 24 seven, but during the time of pandemic, we uh, started and uh, and it's uh, we all are very proud of it and we proudly mention it that in a short span of time from one channel we moved on to uh, having 12 24 7 dth channel one each for um, each class from classes 1 to 12 and also for the dissemination of digital content Diksha, uh, uh, digital infrastructure for uh, knowledge sharing was also launched in 2017. So it is a repository of open educational resources. And during the time of pandemic, we also use this platform for the dissemination of uh, CPDs, continuous professional development uh, courses for the teachers. Then Nishtha also we brought on Diksha to meet the demands of teacher. Before pandemic, we could uh, train uh, around uh, some uh, 21 or so, I'm not uh, remembering the right number. Um, we could train uh, teachers in face-to-face -face mode, but after the pandemic, we moved on to, we, we uh, went digital and using the Deeksha platform. We covered all the elementary teachers uh, through um, ha by having Nishtha on Diksha. And we also utilize this platform for training secondary teachers, uh, teachers for foundational literacy and numeracy. Now we are also heading towards training uh, Anganwadi teachers also. So uh, all these Nishtha programs are, some of the Nishtha programs are in, in pipeline and some have already been executed. In 2018, Samagra Siksha came into being, cyber safety and security guidelines were also developed in 2018. So you might be aware of um, uh, the uh, campaign or Abhyan that was started, Sarva Siksha Abhyan, SSA, and Samagra Siksha, uh, uh, um, uh, what was that? Sarva Siksha, and uh, that was for uh, uh, a middle education, uh, another Abhyan which was started. So we were looking at education in uh, silos, it seems. So the purpose of Samagra Siksha is to see education at a complete whole. The another program now I could remember, yes, RMSA, someone has mentioned also, Rastriya Madhimik Siksha Abhyan and Sarv Siksha Abhyan. So they were targeting towards specific areas of uh, 
education but education need to be taken need to be seen as a complete whole and there should be linkages from one stage uh, between the different stages of education if uh, we uh, see education as a complete whole so maybe there is no need to uh, launch uh, such abhyans to target a specific area of education previous slide which mere uh -huh. then uh, in 2019 uh, you can see uh, nishtha Uh, we uh, launched nishtha guidelines for development of e content uh, were also um, uh, developed in one of the sessions i will be showing you these guidelines also then uh, in 2020 nep 2020 came into being a uh, national education technology uh, forum pragyata guidelines for digital education pm e vidya initiative and uh, nder vsk uh, was launched vidya samiksha kendra for uh, data driven decision making so all these initiatives were launched in between 2020 to 2022 vsk was launched in nep 2020 stresses all these uh, aspect but uh, vsk was launched in uh, 2022 so that is how uh, the journey of etn ict starting from uh, 1972 up till 2022 uh, can be uh, seen next slide please so here we can see uh, the recommendations for nep 2020 uh, for online and digital education so some of it we have already covered uh, while uh, uh, describing that uh, timeline so digital infrastructure is one of the challenge also and one of the need and recommendation of I, uh, nep 2020 we have to have a uh, um, uh digital infrastructure in our country then portals apps and tools we need to have portal apps and tools for specific purposes then digital resources is one of the important area that we have to work towards digital development of digital resources is also a need and also a challenge in a country like india Uh, because uh, education is uh, in concurrent list of our country so there are uh, different uh, states and uts they have to see education work towards education as per their own localized needs so that is the purpose so we need to have digital resources keeping in view the specific needs of different states and uts and also in different languages 22 languages are already listed in our uh, constitution but apart from these 22 languages there are around 1553 languages and dialects in our country and uh, a number of tribal languages also which are medium of instruction in uh, uh, different places of india so we need to have digital resources in uh, more than uh, these uh, 22 languages we need to have but more than these 22 languages we need to have digital resources so that is one of the challenge if all the states and uts are proficient in development of e content by developing themselves a teacher uh, uh, developed resources or we outsource also so uh, we 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 need to have local specific resources in multiple languages then uh, telecast and broadcast technology uh, also need to be harnessed for meeting the uh, goals of uh, education so uh, we are already uh, <clears throat> working towards it as i have already mentioned that cit ncrt has launched we are running uh, now 
12 channels. Uh, because uh, internet technology uh, may not be available for each and every child, so broadcast and telecast technology also need to be harnessed until we have a uh, uniform, I must not say uniform, until we make our available the networks across the country. So technology can also be used, uh, should also be used for e-governance is another uh, expectation of NEP 2020. Online assessment and examination is also um, one of the area which is a challenge and which is a deliverable also for NEP 2020. Because, uh, and this area emerged as a very important area during the time of pandemic when schools were closed. So assessment was one of the challenge to uh, assess the learning of students. So how, um, what online uh, technologies or online uh, provisions are there for the assessment of children also need to be looked at in a more organized and systematic manner. Then building digital competencies of student is another uh, challenge. Although we know that students are more digital competent than the adult uh, learners or adult people, but uh, the uh, moving on to digital uh, has a lot of challenges and responsibilities also. So, uh, for students, we need to focus on uh, the uh, cyber safety and security aspect. If they are moving in cyber spaces, they should not be vulnerable uh, there. So for that, they need to be oriented in cyber safety and security, how to keep themselves safe and protect, protected when they are online, how to respect uh, the privacy of others, that is also they need to understand. So with the digital, there are a lot of challenges which we need to meet through making our uh, population, especially children, aware of cyber safety and security. Then a uh, content pedagogy technology integration is also one of the area that uh, need to be taken care of. Because uh, as teachers, we know our content. We know the pedagogy also. And we know, uh, maybe we know technology also. But to impart quality education, we need to blend all these three, content pedagogy and technology integration. And that too, uh, in a very uh, wise manner to achieve the learning outcomes and to achieve the uh, objectives of what we are going to uh, teach. So uh, this is another area that we need to learn. Then a capacity of, and we will be having a specific session on content pedagogy and technology integration uh, in this uh, training program also, so that you understand uh, how uh, these three need to be blended. And we also um, in NCF, which will be an outcome of NEP 2020, uh, we uh, have suggested to um, uh, get the knowledge of digital pedagogies also. So uh, up till now, in our um, student life and in our professional life, we learned pedagogy, but not digital pedagogy. So we need to learn digital pedagogies also. We need to devise also some digital pedagogies to uh, uh, achieve the uh, targets. Then uh, capacity of teachers and teacher educator, capacity building of teachers and teacher educators is also a very, very important in uh, all the areas of education and also for uh, learning uh, digital uh, pedagogies. Then laying down standards, uh, the institutions like uh, CIET uh, is also uh, responsible for laying down standards for uh, 
each and everything which is uh, which relates to digital for example for e content development uh, the uh, guidelines for e content developments are laid down standards for e content development e content development guidelines are also for uh, uh, children with special needs so how to uh, develop content for what considerations need to be taken care of for children with special needs also another standards that has been laid down by developing these guidelines Pragyata guidelines are another guidelines, then cyber safety and security guidelines are another guideline. So we have to lay down standards for each and everything that we uh, do. Then intensive research in ET is also uh, uh, another area because we all know that uh, uh, the area of technology is very, very dynamic. There are continuous changes in technology. Every day we are coming up newer uh, technologies. So to foresee the kind of technologies which will be in few future, we need to have extensive research in ET and ICT so that we can foresee what changes we need to uh, bring about keeping in view the new and emerging uh, technologies. There are technologies which are disruptive technologies, what kind of disruption they may bring and how to uh, address that uh, uh, disruption can also be one of the area of research. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, uh, here uh, comes the slide which uh, is focused on a variety of digital contents. So what are the kind of digital contents which are developed by CIET and CRT and which are housed uh, on Deeksha and also on the other portals uh, and apps which we have. So energized textbooks, assessment questions, infographics, e-courses, guidelines and handbooks, videos, including Indian sign language videos, interactive immersive content with an element of gamification, audios, talking books, and audio books are another uh, uh, variety of digital contents. Worksheets and assessment sheets are other variety of digital contents that we uh, develop and we have on our portals and apps. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide, Monica. Yeah. So these are uh, some of the major digital initiatives. PM Evidya, Diksha, e Parshala, Nishtha, Swayam, ICT Curriculum. I have already um, talked about these initiative while uh, discussing the timeline. So I am not going to repeat it. So uh, the uh, nuances of PM e Vidya, what are the nuances of PM e Vidya? Here you can see PM e Vidya focuses on unification of efforts enabling multi-mode access to education. Because I already mentioned that we uh, have uh, a kind of digital divide and it is not true only for India. Each and every nation has uh, a digital divide. Uh, but the uh, dimension and nature of divide uh, may be different in different countries, but some in some or the other way, every country has uh, this uh, digital divide. So uh, to uh, address the digital divide, unification of efforts need to be done and PME Vidya ensures the unification of effort to enable multi-mode access to education, not only through one mode, but different modes of education or different modes of 
making the education accessible is being uh, are being harnessed under this um, initiative pm e vidya initiative so what are these uh, multiple modes of delivering education one is television one class one channel another is radio radio may uh, uh, radio is there uh, through which we do um, what can we do utilizing this uh, particular uh, a uh, facility broadcast podcast and community radio so radio can be utilized for broadcast podcast and also we can have community radios uh, for uh, the dissemination of education then diksha one nation one platform it has been seen as one nation one platform initiative but that doesn't mean that it is being controlled from the center or from the national level it is not like that it is a federated platform where each and every uh, state and ut is a tenant and they can use their tenant space in any which way they want to uh, use uh, the space provided uh, 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 to them so they can have energized textbooks uh, their local uh, uh, textbooks their state textbooks resources also in their own uh, languages and e content also meeting to the specific need of that particular state and ut so that is how this is although this is one nation one platform but it is a feder it has a federated structure then special e content uh, e content for uh, differently abled children uh, we also uh, know them as the vyang or cws in children with special needs then online courses online courses for school education is another aspect that we need to uh, focus upon through pm e vidya initiative so uh, this structure has been uh, developed for uh, uh, focusing or developing a resilient and coherent system of education next slide please so a uh, television may what uh, has been done by <clears throat> ciet to harness the potential of television uh 12 dth channel i have already mentioned which are running 20 on 24 7 basis daily and they are also being simulcasted on jio tv app private cable operators and also through youtube channel so that is the example of multi mode delivery so not only on uh, uh the uh, channel which is given to us but semel casting through jio tv app private cable operators and through youtube channel uh, is the uh, initiative that is being done uh, also we uh, have 6300 curriculum based videos which are developed for school education in english uh, hindi Uh, including sign language so these videos are in english in hindi and in sign language and it also includes uh, videos for uh, vocational education then one hour live session for each class for uh, clarification of doubts are also uh, uh, being done then ivrs support for addressing queries of student is another uh, aspect which Uh, relates to the uh, using television for disseminating education next slide please so uh, here we can see radio we have 3688 pieces of curriculum based radio programs for classes 1 to 12 uh, and we are into a process of continuous development of more and more radio program for these classes and these uh, pieces are being broadcasted on 398 radio stations 11 gyanwani fm radio stations 255 community radio stations 
and 132 all India radio stations. Apart from this, iRadio and Geo Savan uh, mobile app is also being harnessed to disseminate these programs. Then 1,881 live programs uh, are being podcast on iRadio. So we are also harnessing the potential of internet radio and, 1000 and uh, 1,881 live programs have already been podcast. Next slide, please. Then uh, here uh, we can see the um, success of uh, Diksha. Uh, so you can see here, 5,900 plus energized textbooks by NCRT, by states, and by different UTs are already there on Diksha. 2,80,000 e-contents are there uh, currently on uh, Diksha. Then 7,000 plus e-courses, 50 million page hits on daily basis uh, are there on Diksha. And it currently supports 32 plus languages, including BICE scheduled languages and Indian sign languages. So these are the languages we have the digital contents in. Then dedicated verticals for foundational literacy and numeracy, adult education, vocational education, virtual labs, and children with special needs. These uh, four are already live on the Iksha, foundation, literacy, and numeracy, you can see. Adult education, you can see. Vocational education, you can see. Virtual labs, all, uh, also you can see on the Iksha. And soon we will be uh, launching this uh, vertical for children with special needs. And the URL for accessing the Iksha is, you can see here, the Iksha.gov.in. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the example of a virtual uh, lab. So 200 plus uh, virtual uh, labs are uh, uh, there currently for science, mathematics, and languages. So you can explore virtual labs also uh, using the same URL. You will get virtual labs also on the Iksha. And we are into continuous development of more and more virtual lab to be housed here on the Iksha. Next, please. So on FLN vertical, uh, we uh, is there to uh, implement the Nipun Bharat mission, uh, which is for foundational literacy and numeracy. So on this vertical, you will get resources uh, for foundational literacy and numeracy. And uh, we are addressing six grades here, preschool one, preschool two, preschool three, class one, class two, and class three. So in uh, the sessions to come, uh, we will take you through uh, the FLN vertical also, uh, and also adult education so that you get to know what all uh, is there. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is education for all vertical, uh, which is for adult education and lifelong learning. Next, please. So uh, there is another uh, facility on Diksha, uh, which is known as Micro Improvement Project. So it, this is available on a Diksha app, not on Diksha portal. So you have to uh, have Diksha app for uh, utilizing it and currently by uh, this micro improvement uh, ability which is there on the iksha app uh, we uh, have launched vidya amrit mahotsav uh, and the theme of vidya amrit mahotsav is innovative pedagogies and uh, lakhs of teachers lakhs and lakhs of teachers are submitting their innovative um, plans, their innovative uh, pedagogies on uh, utilizing this particular ability on the Iksha app to celebrate innovations. Uh, so uh, they will be incentivized also for submitting innovations. Uh, if they are uh, recognized uh, 
in the jury meetings, but all the submission will be uh, there so that we can learn from each other's experiences. Next, please. Then uh, <clears throat> these are the Diksha building blocks uh, we, which we have to use for multiple uh, use cases. Next, please. So uh, mm, uh, this is the physical uh, thing that we uh, have uh, done, we have initiated, bringing of physical and digital worlds by energizing the textbooks. So may you, uh, all the different states and UTs are also um, bringing physical and digital together by energizing their textbooks, as we all know, that the physical textbooks and digital textbooks are energized by QR codes and the chapter specific e-contents are linked to the QR codes. If we uh, uh, scan the QR code by a device, mobile device, scanner uh, of a mobile device, we can get the list of uh, e-content linked to the QR code and watch that in our mobile device. So that is how physical, physical that is the textbook and digital that is the mobile app are being brought together to make a learning uh, joyful and accessible. Apart from this, uh, the uh, science and mathematics textbooks of uh, classes 11th and 12th uh, have also, uh, we have also tried AR technology uh, for these textbooks. Uh, the concept wherever 3D visualization is required uh, have been uh, integrated with AR technology or augmented reality technologies. And by scanning those images which need 3D visualization, we can see the 3D visualization of the relevant content. So that is physical, bringing physical and digital together. Next, please. <clears throat> so you, uh, there, there are also e-content based on UD, uh, based on universal design of learning. There is one uh, Barkha series also, which is based on universal design of learning, which is available on our website and also ISL-based uh, videos, uh, which are uh, linked to, which are based on the chapters of the textbooks. Uh, so we are also working towards that and we have a lot of uh, <coughs> videos in sign language also. Next, please. Uh, so NCRT has also leveraged Diksha to enable coherent access. So uh, I also, I have already discussed multi-mode delivery um, of education or multi-mode access of education. So, and I have also mentioned that we are harnessing the potential of television also. And I also discussed the digital divide. So keeping in view all these things, content being telecasted through 12 channels, digital divide because of having one device only and one television only in the class and more than one children in an household so how to uh, uh, how, how how both children can learn simultaneously is uh, something uh, we uh, <clears throat> kept in view for uh, making the coherent access so whatever is being telecasted on TV, all the lessons also have QR codes. As you can see in the image here, there is a QR code. Uh, a QR code can be seen. Can you bring the cursor there? Uh, in, in the program which is being telecasted, the QR code in the TV, yeah. So if one child is in class ninth and another is in class seventh, so class seven child can go on to the channel, which is for class seven, scan the QR through the mobile device and watch the program for class seven, which is being telecasted that time on the mobile device. And one child can watch the uh, television. So like that, uh, the coherent access is being ensured. 
and all the telecasted programs are also then uploaded on Diksha so that they can be used uh, late. They can be used later by the uh, children. Next, please. So this is uh, Vidya Samiksha Kendra VSK. So right now these programs are there on VSK, and Vidya Samiksha Kendra is to take a stock of what what is going on and also for data driven decision making. For example, for Nishtha. If we have uh, data uh, for Diksha, how many teacher in one particular state have uh, uh, done uh, the courses which are available uh, through Nishtha? So that data is emitted in Vidya Samiksha Kendra so that we get to know the progress of each and every state and UTs. This is one example of data which is emitted in Avidya Samiksha Kendra, I am uh, telling you, but there can be n number of data which is, uh, which is relevant for you for taking data driven decision making. So by seeing the progress of state, we can focus uh, on the states and UTs which are lagging behind in uh, accessing Nishtha on Diksha. So uh, that is about Vidya Samiksha Kendra. Next slide, please. Yeah. So we have also established an experiential lab uh, at CIT and CRT to demonstrate, to showcase the newer and emerging technologies. So right now we have um, O labs there and also we have uh, we are a uh, technology to be demonstrated for uh, teachers and uh, whosoever visits uh, Diksha so that they get to know new and emerging technologies and uh, have an exposure of the technology in their uh, specific uh, areas of work or in their specific states and um, UTs. Uh, apart from this, we also have those physical books also demonstrated here where they are energized with augmented reality technology. So all uh, those newer and emerging technologies are demonstrated here. Right now we have uh, these three, but we are planning to demonstrate more and more new technologies also in this experiential learning lab so that uh, we get an exposure to different technologies and whosoever visits CIT can get an exposure to newer technologies to be adopted if they wish to adopt any of them. Then a uh, continuous professional development is being done through these four uh, ways, Nishtha, CPD courses, then MOOCs for school education and online capacity building on ET and ICT. Uh, using uh, webinars and live interaction uh, sessions uh, for online training in ET and ICT. And the platform which are being used are Moodle, Sunbird, Open edX, and Google Course Builder. Next, please. So <clears throat> you can see uh, the uh, these are the Nishta initiative, Nishta 1.0 for elementary education. 2.0 for uh, school edu edu uh, secondary education, or 3.0 for Nipun Bharat for foundational literacy and numeracy, and 4.0 for uh, again for uh, Nipun Bharat for ECCE, early childhood care and education. Next, please. Then uh, these are the uh, other CPTs on Diksha, other than uh, we have uh, on Nishtha. Cyber hygiene practices, uh, personal digital, uh, uh, personal digital devices, in my environmental hazards um, of electronic waste, then COVID-19 responsive behavior, it's a UNICEF uh, course, then action research, Urdu language script writing course, Catch the Rain is also uh, developed by UNICEF. So there are uh, 3,50,000 beneficiaries of these courses. 
Next, please. Then MOOCs on Swayam. So you can see here uh, around 3 lakhs beneficiaries, 28 online courses uh, in 11 subject areas. And 10 cycles of these courses have already uh, been run. Next, please. So you can see here, this is uh, the platform for ICT, uh, for accessing ICT curriculum. And uh, these are the uh, learning strands, which are for teachers, and these are for themes for students. Next, please. So uh, online capacity building on ET and ICT is uh, um, uh, also one of the uh, initiative which I have already mentioned. So 16 online trainings have been imparted, 650 plus webinars uh, done, and 1,50,000 beneficiaries uh, benefited out of this. You can see here the list of capacity building courses which are disseminated through all these <clears throat> three initiatives. Then uh, ePartshala uh, is a mobile app and, and a portal. So you can see the uh, number of visitors here. And it has also been uh, a part of uh, an umbrella app, which is Government of India's app, Umang. It has been given space there. Next, please. So this is the branding of ePartshala. So these are the mobile apps, which are branded under ePartshala mobile app. So Nishtha, Augmented Reality, Parak, NAS, SSP, Mauritius app, ePartshala scanner app, NCF app and Prashas app. Next, please. So these are the guidelines I already mentioned. Pragyata, guidelines for e-content development for children with disabilities. Guideline uh, for development of e-content for school and teacher education. Next, please. Then uh, we can also see here cyber safety and security guidelines. All these guidelines are available on our uh, on CIT's uh, website and uh, also on Diksha. So you can see here uh, these cyber safety and security guidelines, which are there in English and Hindi. And these guidelines are for teachers, parents, students, and schools. Next, please. So these are some of the international collaborations that we have with Mauritius school online program between the children of India and Israel, training master trainers of Nepal on development and dissemination of e-content and OER, school uh, online program. It is a collaboration between India and uh, Korea, Korean schools, Indian schools and Korean schools and uh, shared e-content developed by um, NCRT. Next, please. So these are some of the other initiative. This is Sahayog DTH TV support for telecounseling. So we are doing telecounseling, then ICT award for teacher and educators, e-content development competitions and ICT fair. Talk to NCRT voice assistant, Mano Darpan, IVRS based 24 7 counseling support. Next. Next. So, this is the summary of ICT initiatives. And recently, uh, next slide. Uh, CIT uh, NCRT has received a UNESCO award for their uh, digital initiatives. Uh, which is King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technology in education. So uh, that is uh, uh, one of the uh, important achievement uh, apart from some other achievement which we uh, gained in the past. So that is all I think maybe about the um, ICT initiatives. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you. If you have any questions, we have 
do we have some time for questions also okay so uh, now we will uh, <clears throat> have a tea, tea break and maybe i will be taking two more sessions today <laughs> so i can take questions uh, during those sessions thank you very much Do over to dr monica Uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, this elaborate uh, presentation on all the ICT initiatives which are uh, being uh, availed at uh, national level. And all these initiatives, we also are a part indirectly or directly. We are also a part to all these initiatives. And we will be, whatever we will be learning, we can contribute through those resources to these initiatives and become a directly contributors in a different uh, these initiatives at state level or national level so once again thank you very much ma'am for this presentation now uh, we would be moving to uh, a small break not a very 